All right, guys, let's head on over to github.com. This is where we will download the emulator. The link to this page will be in the description below. Once you're here, scroll down to assets and we're downloading this emulator for Windows. So we want to click on download Windows X64 release zip and our download should start. The file is now downloaded and I have saved it onto my desktop. Now we need to extract this file, but first we're going to create a new folder. So right click new folder and you can call this whatever you like i'm going to call it duck ps1 now let's move that zip file into this created folder go ahead and open the folder now the reason i created this folder is because once we extract the duck station zip file it's going to create a lot of additional files now let's go ahead and extract this file once you have 7 zip installed on your pc all you want to do is come back here right click on the file go to 7 zip and extract here and there we are we have all of our files extracted now go ahead and reopen your browser and you want to come to this page i cannot leave this link in the description below so you would just have to copy this link here into your browser and this will be our playstation bios a file we need to get duckstation up and running once you're here go ahead and download it the BIOS file is now downloaded and I have saved it onto my desktop. Now we need to extract this file as well. So let's right click on it, go to 7-zip, extract here. We have our BIOS file, let's delete the zip folder. Now let's open our DuckStation emulator folder and we're gonna create a new folder in here. Right click, new folder, and we're gonna call it BIOS. And all we're gonna do is drag our extracted BIOS file on our desktop over into this folder now let's go ahead and open the emulator and what you want to click on is duckstation qt x64 now the first thing we're going to do is set up our bios directory so let's go up to settings bios settings and under bios directory go ahead and hit browse now you want to locate wherever you save that bios in my case i have it in my folder on my desktop duck ps1 select the bios folder and then select open. Now let's go down to controller settings. I'm gonna be using an Xbox One controller with this emulator, a wire controller will work as well. Under controller type, you have the option to choose which type of PS1 controller you would like to use. I'm gonna emulate a DualShock controller. That way we can use our analog joysticks. Now for our directional buttons, up, down, left, right, we can use our D-pad or you can use your analog stick. I'm going to use my analog stick, so we'll press right here for up, and I'm just going to press my analog stick up, down, press my stick down, left, and press my stick to the right. Go ahead and set up the rest of these, your select, start, triangle, cross, circle, square, right trigger, left trigger, and so on. Once you're done setting those buttons up, you want to go to save profile, new, and go ahead and give your controller layout a name. Now head down to display settings and under renderer, we have hardware 11, hardware 12, Vulkan, OpenGL, and software. You can play around with these settings and see which one works best for you. For me, I'm just gonna leave it at hardware 11 because I have no issues. We're gonna go ahead and check VSync to make sure we get no screen tearing. For the aspect ratio, by default, it's going to be on game native, which is basically 4x3, which will give you the black bars on the side. If you would like to stretch your screen to full screen, and yes, it will be a little stretch, but it will be full screen, you can go 16x9. I'm just going to leave it at 4x3. And if you would like to see your game's FPS, go ahead and check Show Display FPS. And if you would like to see what resolution you're playing as, go ahead and check Show Resolution. Now let's go to enhancement settings. And here's my favorite part about this emulator, and that's the internal resolution scale. By default, it's gonna be on one times, but we can crank this up to 720p, 1080p, 1440p, or even 4K. I only have a 1080p monitor, so I'm going 1080p. And for the texture filtering, this is totally optional. Nearest neighbor will work, bilinear will work, and XBR will work. I choose to run in XBR. We're going to leave everything else here at the default settings. And the very last thing we're going to do is head all the way back up to the top where it says general settings and we're going to check start full screen. What this will do is once we launch a game, that game will start in full screen mode. Now I'm going to show you how to add your games to the emulator. 
Let's go back up to settings and then game list settings. At the top where it says search directories, go ahead and hit the plus button. And then you wanna locate wherever you keep your ROMs. In my case, I keep mine on an external hard drive. Select that folder and then hit select folder. Would you like to scan this directory? Yes. Now, when you come back to your main menu, you're gonna see all of your PS1 ROMs right here. Now, you have to check the region of your PS1 ROMs. In my case, my ROMs are US and Canada ROMs. So I have to set my BIOS to US and Canada. So let's go back up to settings, BIOS settings. Now you're gonna see Japan, US and Canada, and Europe and Australia. I'm US and Canada, so I'm gonna hit the drop down arrow and I'm gonna select the BIOS for that. And that's what you have to do if your games will not load. Now we can load our games up directly from this screen. If you just click on the game, it should start up. Now that we have our emulator all set up, now we can use our second Duck Station emulator, which has a much cleaner interface. Let's reopen that Duck Station folder and we wanna load the NOGUI64 emulator. And as you guys see, this is a much cleaner interface and we can actually navigate this with our controller. Let's go to open game list. And this is where you can find your games. Go ahead and select the game and it will load up. <laughs> 